evening everyone good evening welcome on the workplace trends india today uh, we have ajay uh, mr ajay uh, from pvr mr arjun sharma from select city walk and uh, sanjeev mohanty from levis welcome to perhaps the most anticipated retail webinar of 2020 thank you thank you all of you for coming on workplace trends india today all three of uh, uh, all three of you represent the number one brands and the most successful businesses in your respective industries you are all trail blazers and some of the most successful thought leaders we have a keen audience that is looking forward to learning from you insight and views they would love to know how you are tackling this pandemic and becoming stronger it gives me great honor to have all of you here today thank you let's start uh, the uh, as we have a standard format in workplace trends we don't talk about numbers and we don't dig out which is future we talk about experiences and experiences personal experiences where you are planning to implement or implementing already so let me start uh, with the arjun sharma as i have already briefed arjun is a known name and especially in delhi if anybody is shopping and not going to select city walk actually is not shopping this is my view and second thing uh, which personally uh, like sanjeev uh, has mentioned If we talk about App Store, so Arjun Sharma, Select City Walk is like an App Store, and we have the two most famous apps with us, PVR and Levi's. So let's start with Arjun. Arjun, uh, as I've heard uh, earlier, you were in travel business. Sita was like another you know, famous brand, and from the travel, you jumped to the mall business. Either you are an astrologer, or you know that this business gonna be a you know most rocking business for you, and you invested in Sala, you know the Sakit kind of you know locality, and today. It is one of the most most successful mall. Can you just give us little bit glimpses of your story? How you started? How you came across this idea? Uh, thank you, Tushar. Thank you uh, for having me on your show. Uh, really looking forward to spending this one hour, especially with my very dear friend from school, Ajay Bijli, whom I have literally grown up with. He's been part of my journey from school and. in the select city walk journey and of course my good friend sanjeev mohanty who's been a very good partner we've known each other from his benetton and his levi's days and and really it's a it's it's a it's been a partnership with with both of them and i'm delighted to be here so let me begin by sharing a little bit my journey you know my family owned a travel business called sita world travel my father started that way back in the 1950s so tourism has been my dna and it still remains my dna and everything i do i do with the filter of hospitality and tourism because i just put the client first i i think we just put ourselves behind the client and we just try and see everything to the eyes of the customer uh we are our end customer who is shopping with us or our partners who are our intermediaries in the company or at this company that i formally speak of them as a as a as a as a friend so it's been an amazing journey um, i spent uh, close to the up to the year 2000 my father sold that business uh, in the year 2000 to a swiss company called koni and my sister and i were given as part of the dowry to the swiss company to work with and i think it was most amazing because from a family run business we were we went into a multinational into a swiss company and for the first time i had to do forecasting budgeting you know otherwise in a family company at least in the you know 90s you really didn't care too much about those things you know you just did as you felt like so i think the whole process of learning uh, became embedded in 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 that in that whole journey of two years uh, historically and i'm very happy to say it i was fired in the year 2002 because i didn't agree with my then boss uh, who wanted to uh, you know post 911 wanted me to sack you know 25% my workforce i had already achieved my budget history goes back and i i kind of left the company and select city walk came out of that out of that period so when i ever write a book to shar it will be it will be one of the titles could be one of the paragraph one of the chapters could be thank god i was fired uh, <laughs> incidentally incidentally i i never did leave the tourism business i continued in the year 2005 by investing in another travel business which i um, Uh, continue to be the chairman i was the, i brought in the world's largest company called tui as my partner from 2005 to 2013 uh, we built one of india's largest tourism businesses again and i'm quite happy to say that by in the year 2008 i could actually uh, beat my previous company sita and koni at it and, and the rest is history um, and in the, in the year 2013 uh, you know i was burning both ends of the candle the family life was getting very compromised so i kind of decided that 
uh, in the travel business to probably exit gradually and hand over control to my 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 german partners and but they since 2013 retained me as the chairman of the company so yes tourism continues but then comes the the journey of of life which is really about select city walk this is a partnership between me my sister and our partner called aron group we work together um it really came out of uh, out of an opportunity of you know looking at new businesses uh, we looked at hospitality hospitality but i think post 911 we were a little kg didn't want to sell a room every day prefer selling a room for 3 years 6 years 9 years to good tenants and good partners like sanjeev and ajay who can take long term uh, partnership with you and again i would say the 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 journey was really to put the customer in the front and i think that is something that i see in all our partners you know when i look at ajay's business i i just see him doing maybe 10x you know how he's transformed the the cinema business you know today cinema experience is beyond compare his his products are just go up and up and up and keep rising and i think it's it's amazing in fact i i'm so proud that you know we've been school buddies and we've been partners now for over 12 13 years in a business so i think it's it's been an amazing journey um, select city walk today trades the highest sales per square foot in the country we are probably twice the national average uh, we've kind of curated the project uh, one of the the key things in the project was that it's a it's a fully lease project a great part of it except for maybe the cinemas and 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 some uh, service apartments because at that time we didn't have the necessary capital but predominantly 100% of the leased area is is leased so it's a big shift from a sale model to a lease model something that the industry had not got experience to and i think um, we were very lucky we had some great teams of people who have worked with us professionals who we empowered who really if you ask if you ask people like sanjeev and and maybe ajay's team uh um, you know we come very little in the front we we keep we keep little very behind it we kind of guide and do guidance we really don't micro manage the business fortunately because i think we've reached a stage where we want to spend quality family time we want to spend you know our other interests uh, I, i i now for example i'm a student of vedanta so i i spend a lot of time in that so i think it's been a it's been a great journey of entrepreneurship professionalism getting mixed into one and i think the one thing that that i i i'm grateful for we are we are we have not been hungry to grow for the sake of growth so we've been very under leveraged uh, we've been managed to keep you know our debts under control we've just we just you know we stay to our knitting you know i one thing i learned from my father you know be uh, a mile deep and an inch wide rather than being uh, a mile wide and an inch deep and i think that is something that i that i i i, I see my life through that filter So, if you permit me, these are some opening remarks of my journey, and I'm, I'm really happy to share this forum with my good friends Ajay and Sanjeev. Now, so before I go to them, I have a lot of masala for them. You know, I want to just dig out a little bit more with you. You know, how will you attract both of them uh, to come back to your malls and you know again further invest and get their client you know back to the malls? What is the plan? You know, what is the plan? How you how will you be attracting most elite class of the Delhi to your malls? And you give them a statement that guys, you are safe here. what is the plan well you know i think uh, let's move to the whole post covid situation um, no business plan uh, tushar had ever envisaged something as disruptive as what we have all experienced in the last 3 4 months um, and i think it's it's been a learning journey for all of us i think firstly and foremostly we have to all work together as the retailers association of india as the cinemas as the shopping centers to basically convince the government firstly and foremostly to open us all up we are still waiting of course for the cinemas to open but yes i'm sure in good time that will also happen uh it was quite a herculean task and i don't blame the government because even the government was dealing with it the first time i think no one really knew where we were going uh there were big debates around for example air conditioning you know and we had to work with creating guidelines with cpwd with ashray because people were apprehensive that you know this could become transmitted through the through the air conditioning system so all those guidelines for example humidity control filtration control sanitization control air changes all these were whole part of a, a learning curve for us so i think the first real step was how to keep the place secure sanitized for example we got tunnels from drdo we got chemicals that are approved by for example the defense research development authority so we gave a lot of confidence to our customers on opening i think that was the first our plan really for the first couple of months is to just reassure people and we've seen that step so you know i remember when we opened on june 8 the first day 
uh, by the way they they came out with the guidelines to open on 7th of june and we were ready on 8th we were the first mall to open uh, because we were we said let's just open with a bang uh, of course we had a lot of media we had a lot of coverage they tested us you know and how media is you know i think from sting operations to everything they they bombed us with but it was it was part of the part of the whole uh the whole uh, experience now as we progress it's probably a month into opening uh, we've seen footfalls gradually go up so from say about 2500 people we're averaging about 6500 7000 people every day on weekends it spikes a little more uh, but really there's no difference in weekend weekdays now because every for a lot of people you know every day could be a weekend uh i think it's really about uh, working with the brands uh, so brands like levi's have kind of lifted up their game there have been some offers and it's been a mixed bag out there yes some brands have done better like some brands are back to pre covid level of sales you know for example the grocer for example uh, the wine store uh, uh, a lot of the cosmetics uh, the uh, let's say uh, skin care for example outstanding the numbers of certain brands i i won't give names because you know we a lot of privacy around numbers but up back to pre covid level yes Uh, the F&B industry is challenged at the moment. They've had really issues. Some apparel brands have had challenges. I think it's going to be it's going to be a three-month journey. Uh, I think uh, from our perspective, we are waiting for our cinemas to open because cinemas are a very very big draw. Uh, they they make people and I'm waiting for the day when the cinemas open and Ajay and I can jointly host uh, a whole bunch of people for the first movie show and we will be there together to okay. show to people that look. you know these are safe places and i think that's the proof that i want to put out there because i know our protocols are safe and i know what ajay's team will do the protocols will be safe these protocols are are and we are responsible businesses i think that's the key to what i wish to communicate to your panel is that we are all very responsible businesses yes consumers have had a big shock consumers have had a big demand i would say sales are back uh, are they anywhere close to pre covid levels no we- we missed you uh, in our case we have two anchors which are also opening we have uh, we have a, a, a new anchor in decathlon which is about to open on 15th august it will be the first massive decathlon and decathlon is a very very large anchor uh, and zara was shut down uh, in in our case for a for a makeover and they're doing a global flagship store with us which because of covid got disrupted because of the renovation plan you know, were no workers so they restarted the work so i think by 15th august we will have two big anchors and god willing 15th august as ajay and i are crossing our fingers cinemas will open as well yeah. so i think i think the industry will bounce back i have full faith in the industry i believe in this industry and i and i know that collectively this industry will 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 outshine so so arjun i'm i'm really really uh, you know thankful uh, for you that you have given a lot of optimism or uh, positivity to this industry and you know ajay is smiling continuously he is not you know he is looking at you and is smiling you know so he is just thinking that arjun is so positive definitely something will you know get everybody will be get back to the cinema then you know retail on 15 any specific uh, you know demand you have with ajay before i am going to ajay i want to just <laughs> i just want him to choose a good movie <laughs> so then we watch it together with our friends and you all of you correct correct choose a good movie you know I, and i trust ajay's judgment uh, he'll correct. find a blockbuster and i know he will lay it out and uh, jotsna selina ajay and i will jointly host that evening together okay. right ajay absolutely and, then, and being a host you will also invite me okay i just <laughs> remember okay great so ajay uh, the, i think arjun has given a very uh, wide perspective and uh, he is humble like uh, because of uh, <clears throat> the the way he manages his business i think he has given the you know right but uh, i will not ask you any technical question because i have lot of you know demand from the audience that they want to know how a, a person started from amritsar and now because biggest cesar of the movies like if salman khan or shahrukh khan want to come to my you know my uh, you know entertainment they have to cross ajay bisley first and they will come to me okay so the fundamentally you are the you are the front uh, you know face of entertainment industry first give us the little story from amritsar yeah. till till here ushar first of all thank you for uh, having me on this panel and and uh, you know hello to everybody uh, and of course arjun uh, has been my senior in school he said that only one year but even in modern school even if it's one year you look up to the uh, senior and uh, he's always led the way and it's been a fabulous uh, friendship and partnership and extremely inspirational story 
So before I talk about myself, I must say that when Arjun was, uh, you know, going for this uh, property, and uh, he was very clear even at that time, and that was a very important lesson that I learned to have that kind of clarity of thought. And he said, I'll only do one, and I will not do too many. And what he said just now today. And it'll be, it's like Harrods, there's only one Harrods. There's only going to be one select city walk. I remember his dialogue. And uh, even then he was very clear that quality is what matters and you need to cherry pick who your partners are going to be. You've got to cherry pick who's the best in whatever category. And I was privileged that, uh, you know, he uh, chose PVR. And uh, so that's uh, one thing that I must say. Um, and so it's been incredible. And even now he's been super inspirational. Uh, so my journey really, uh, 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 Shah, is that uh, my, my father ran a trucking company. My grandfather used to run uh, since 1939 a company called Amritsar Transport Company. I was uh, personally born in, Bomb uh, in Delhi, not in Amritsar. Uh, but, uh, but I was like a typical Punjabi boy who was studying in modern school and then went to Hindu college and was supposed to just join the family business. Uh, I was fortunate that in 1978, uh, my father also bought a cinema. Uh, he was an arbitrator. So in an arbitration, he, the only way he could settle a dispute amongst six, seven people was to get this property Priya. He was not interested in cinema at all. But at that time, he said, okay, it's okay to have one real estate, uh, and which is a cinema. Uh, so when I joined the family business, I really struggled. In 1988, I finished college, Hindu. And Hindu had two, uh, what do you call, zero years, duta years. So I was playing, I did basketball honors instead of uh, uh, become on us and uh, so when I when I joined I was struggling I really didn't think that was my calling to be honest with you at the same time I was very keen to uh, impress my father and uh, and make sure that I you know I live up to his expectations so Priya is what I uh, looked at and in Delhi at that time only three cinemas were playing English movies so uh, there was Chanakya there was Archana and Priya sporadically used to play English movies so the gap that I found in the market was that there was not a good Hollywood uh, film cinema and there were a lot of backlog of Hollywood films that were coming. And I also felt that even the Indian movies were very larger than life. They were colorful. Uh, our whole format is very exaggerated. Good looking guys, good looking girls, uh, dancing, all that. But the journey in, uh, into the uh, film uh, was very, very glamorous. But outside of film, where you sat down, was, was not very glamorous at all. You had rickety seats, you had, you know, not very uh, pleasant experience. So my whole idea was that can we make the, that transition from the world of make-believe to the real world uh, as smooth as possible. So even when the movie is off and the end credits are rolling and lights are on, people still look at a colorful environment. They look at seats which have fabric, they look at colored uh, carpets and stuff like that. So the whole thing started by uh, trying to come out with a conduit that links the moviegoers and the filmmakers uh, by making an infrastructure which was very, very uh, colorful, vibrant, very high on technology because Indian people, all of us, take our movies very seriously. So that's really how it happened. In 1990, I opened the first uh, single screen cinema in Priya uh, and just ran English movies. Uh, then 92, I had a personal setback where da dad passed away. So I was also doing the same thing as what Arjun said, that I was running the trucking company as well as the uh, cinema company, but I was really enjoying cinema. Selena and I used to go to pre and cut tickets in the. I used to wait for the, you know, the hours to end at the tra transport company, which was in Chandni Chowk, and then run to Vasan Vihar and and you know put the posters up and you know sell tickets and stuff like that and take bookings on the phone. Uh, so that my my mother saw that. To be honest with you, uh, I'm grateful she's still with me in the house, and she's been another Harvard University for me. So there's one Harvard, which I've been to twice, but the biggest, bigger university has been my mom. And she clearly saw it on my face. You know, moms can tell that trucking business was distress. This was a joy. So she said very clearly that there's no compulsion whatsoever. It doesn't matter if your grandfather ran this and your father was passionate about it. Your passion comes when you talk about cinemas. Just take this to another level. So that's how, Tushar, I won't bore everybody with the long story, but that's how I started really looking at only cinemas. I, we opened the first multiplex in 97 in Anupam and uh, Saket. And then, you know, we had a joint venture partner. Joint venture partner went away. So 9-11 was a very big year for me as well because my joint venture partners are Australians. They got very uh, scared of traveling abroad and they said we want to uh, move away. I got Renuka Ramnath as uh, my uh, equity partner because we were the only company which had 12 screens and a brand name called PVR. And uh, so once you get private equity, you also have to look at exit. So they enter from here, they exit from there. 
so it's like a cinema it's like an auditorium you see yeah. the entry but you also have to quickly show the exit sign to people as well so therefore the exit is can only happen if you have critical mass the exit yeah. can only happen if you build a very uh, professional reputed profitable company so i was very profitability driven and i was also making sure there's a quality offering we listed the company in 2006 then after that we did a bunch of acquisitions and now that's all i do and i've been a big believer of doing one thing but doing it uh, right although the pandemic has taught me that all the management books are going to be rewritten now because i don't think doing one thing uh, yeah. really uh, you know is also a very good strategy sometimes sometimes it is of course for some people it's really paid off uh, tremendously all the it companies and all but for some people doing one thing and uh, some eventuality like this happens although it's happened after 100 years can really really bring your revenues to zero so i think uh, uh, that's that but prior to this i was very very uh, you know excited about this one do one thing do it exceedingly well whether it's a, a sportsman whether it's an actor whether it's a businessman whether it's anybody who specializes in one thing but does it well has always fascinated me so that's really uh, you know been my journey so uh, here we are after uh, 20 22 years now <laughs> so we can uh, we we can see you know like i think two words which uh, you know the instinct which uh, you know made you today what you are and the uh, building the experience you know i think uh, personally I, i'll share my thoughts uh, uh, as a, like whenever i visit uh, pvr i am part of you know i i do interior so i can see you know the kind of vibration even the washrooms are so you know kind of gold color you know mosaic tiles or red color clothes on the you know uh, the kind of experience is built around it is like you know amazing i think you know people are Uh, and uh, uh, when we discuss about like ott versus the uh, cinema i think anybody who has experience uh, you know pvr will definitely go back to have that experience so my next question uh, as a that uh, now everybody like hotstar netflix all these you know uh, ott platforms are coming what is the plan how we uh, how we you know discuss uh, you know that idea like so people are talking office or no office the same thing is like the 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 the, the cinema hall or maybe netflix so what is the plan to you know uh, exist in the the current disruptive world so sir sure, uh, we uh, you know we have there are three engines you know which which run the cinema business yeah. and i believe in all three engines a lot and especially in the in the indian market so there's a symbiotic relationship that we've got with the film industry there's a relationship that we've got with uh, uh, arjun uh, mall developers in the retail side real estate side and the number one engine which i find is the just hum, human beings i think humanity was not designed to stay at home okay this four months you can change the behavior of somebody who's not born as yet but you can't change the behavior of people who are already there so i don't think uh, people in four months five months six months all of a sudden are going to say listen i don't want to go out of my home so i think uh, i am my my destiny is entwined with the humanity with humanity i think human beings are uh, so everything uh, uh, being equal movies coming 1800 films come in india 1800 films so and and world box so i know you don't like numbers but just to give you one number no you can it will be great uh, if we can get number there is no net, no net box office globally last year was 43 billion out of 43 billion 20 billion went back to the film industry so wow. first first and foremost is the film industry cannot afford to leave that money on the table the movie production costs are going very high even films which are not very expensive let's talk about last two three years movies like razi andhadhun uh, badhai ho so many films are very small budget movies they also ended up making 100 100 200 crores at the box office so one is the film industry cannot actually ignore this window whatever has happened on the ott platform these sales that have happened just now i have hardly bothered talking to too many people about it because it's an aberration Yeah. I, like i'm an ath- athlete the cinema who on the floor and one athlete is up and running on the track so obviously they're going to follow him they're not going to follow somebody who's on the floor so i think uh, the comparison between ott and uh, and cinemas is of a shut shop and an open shop so you can't compare an open shop and a shut shop first of all so that's one thing that is there the moment we open up then if comparisons are made i'll be very happy but i still believe the comparison will be like a kitchen versus a restaurant one is completely experiential and one is really sitting at home putting your feet up which i also do and you watch your ott platforms uh, second is uh, the whole experience of the indian market just now uh, of going out and and entertaining themselves and not just watching a movie 
as uh, what uh, the amazing tenancy mix and the amazing multi uh, you know uh, the basket of activities which are available under a mall uh, like select city walk so that is the second leg which is very important for us as long as these malls are made organized shopping centers with amazing retail outlets retail experiences uh, restaurants are there people are going to go out and third as i said is the indian consumer so which is like just uh, i don't use the word dying to go out anymore i don't think that's a good phrase to use but it was very very uh, you know uh, uh, you know caught up in this in incarcerated in this lockdown for such a long time uh, that that he's going to go out so i think these three factors are going to bring people back in it is a pandemic it has taken everybody by storm uh, it's not something which no anybody anticipated arjun correctly said but i think it it will go away once the vaccine comes i think nobody's going to stop humanity from going out and doing what they were doing earlier it is my nobody has a crystal ball where you can guess this is my prediction i may be completely wrong but that's my feeling i'm i'm a bit of an optimist i think it's a modern school dna i don't know what it is <laughs> but uh, that's what i feel so should i consider that 15th of august we can go to cinema again Like that is not you, that is not up to me to be honest with you because there's a but you are ready but you are uh, ready with your uh, plan we are we are absolutely ready with all our protocols uh, we've been discussing with all the cinema operators all over the world what the best uh, standards are SOPs are whatever is needed to make people feel comfortable uh, people have to feel good they have to feel safe they have to feel secure we we are absolutely ready but we need to get the permission of uh, the home ministry and the state governments before we can open So that I don't know. I'm just hoping it's 15th August, but I don't know the date as yet. I watched the, that PVR movie about you know we are ready. You know we are ready. PVR cinema. Like yeah. What is the idea behind like you no? Know, so I see that lot of confidence, lot of you know welcoming messages out of that movie. You know, just can you brief little bit about that movie? You know, because I was I was getting a lot of feedback because people didn't know what protocol cinemas can uh, can offer. So there was a lot of confusion in people's heads about how the cinema experience will be. so therefore we decided that we must make a movie so we had to actually take permission from one of the mall developers uh, and uh, open it we spoke to the government as well state government and and we wanted a cinema where everything was there we had the playhouse we had the gold we had everything imax so we said that can we make a film here so i thought that that was only to just basically give a heads up to people because there was a lot of uh, confusion in people's heads how the cinema experience experience is going to be so i think we, a little prematurely we released it but i was keen to release it to at least about 10 million 20 million uh, uh, people that are our consumer base which are the loyalty members so we just sent it to all of them so that at least that part uh, is out of their way that uh, it's not going to be a you know there was no uh, mystery around it how the cinema is going to be experienced great so uh, uh, as uh, you have uh, won lot of awards lot of you know i i can't even like you know in such a short time i can't even like read all the you know how many federations you represent or you know what is your one you know idea or you know uh, thinking which is inspiring other you know players or maybe like the, the you you represent you know cinema federation globally so what how you inspiring other uh, you know people or maybe your team that you know we will be back we will be more stronger than earlier <laughs> before you know so you are harvard alumni so i can i can relate you must have you know uh, cook some recipe as yet. like you know so definitely you would be ready with the plan can you just uh, explain something what is in your mind honestly there, there, there is no silver bullet there is there is nothing like that it's just that you need to be uh, as arjun is as sanjeev i'm sure is you need to be transparent uh, you need to be open you need to be honest and you need to paint a picture which is realistic it can't be over uh, optimistic either you need to tell people that this is what it is if you look at the uh, historical uh, evidence to, since spanish flu and since so many uh, recessionary times uh, cinema still Uh, has bounced back and is bounced back because the ticket size of of watching a movie is still very small compared to other leisure activities so a lot of other leisure activities travel uh, you know indulging in various other activities they unfortunately take a hit but but movie business doesn't take a hit so i think you just can just tell people by the historical data and the uh, by by basically the past uh, how uh, this business is still uh, there exactly what i've told you is what i would tell everybody that listen i don't think we can immediately uh, write off uh, such a strong business where 1.45 billion people came to see cinemas in india last year uh, that that's a lot and when again when you talk to filmmakers every filmmaker is waiting for the big movie to be released in the cinemas as well so there's suryavanshi coming there's a movie called 83 coming radhe kuli number 
all that internationally tenet which is christopher nolan's film mulan top gun all this so all these indicators tell give you confidence and that confidence you have to tell your team and all the stakeholders that uh, it's not going to die that easily so uh, so ajay one uh, another question which i want to ask uh, before we go to sanjeev that you have uh, not only changed the experience of cinema you have also changed the experience of you know food habits like so people go they have nice you know popcorn at your Now, earlier the cinemas were like you know the popcorn or like you know some coffee or something but today if you go to pbr you find uh, interesting uh, you know range of you know food as a like uh, very quick food which you can get from pbr you know cinema are you also thinking to increase the revenue that there should be some pop shops uh, pop uh, you know pop stores where you can buy some stuff or maybe some retail is coming to your cinema any any idea on that Uh, yes, uh, Kushar. As, as before, this panel started. As I mentioned to you, there are three things that I'm working on simultaneously, and I'm writing a little article on it, which is rescue, revival, and reinvention. And I can't do it sequentially. I have to do it simultaneously because uh, we have to first rescue and survive, then we have to re- uh, revive our our business, and then we have to reinvent. So one of the reinventions is that uh, uh, revenues can't be only when the shutters are up. Revenues have to be there when the shutters are down as well. and fnb is about 30% of our total revenues <clears throat> and i think currently the uh, the fnb is only getting consumed when people come to the cinemas only a right. little 4700 bc popcorn is what people take away home so i want uh, fnb is one thing that i want people to take back home even if they're watching a movie on netflix so i want a part of pbr a piece of pbr to be taken out so we are really looking at a very good uh, bouquet of uh, food products uh, proprietary food products Uh, what mns has done marks and spencer has done very successfully better monje has done a lot of these brands have done internationally to come out with a pbr uh, uh, fnb uh, brand which people can take away you can sell on ecom uh, you can have little pop up stores or stores which are facing outside as well uh, we definitely thinking along those lines so would you like sanjeev to come and uh, open uh, levi's store in pbr absolutely why not as i said the more experiential uh, uh, you know pbr's offering becomes with brands like levi's where merchandising can happen with movies the better it is the more i get differentiated from watching at home you see i have to keep pushing the envelope of becoming more and more experiential you know what you know what uh, sub do soleil did uh, you know so cinema has to be something where people say i can't get get this at home if i can get this at home then why am i going out but if you're sitting in the car get you know making a program car parking this that whatever then once they come they say you know wow i'm so happy i'm out that because this i couldn't have got it home so i think we'll keep doing that yeah so uh, thank you ajay thank you uh, thank you very much for giving this idea to other you know your competitors also they will also start thinking on those lines okay <laughs> So Arjun, uh, before I go to Sanjeev, I want to ask like, if Sanjeev goes to directly uh, Ajay and start uh, Levi's store in PBR, would you mind it? You know, I think today the world is getting together. There is no you versus us. It all comes together. At the end of the day, we are all want to do one thing. We want to get share of wallet. How you get share of wallet is the key to it. And that I fully agree with Ajay. Can only come through experience. and that experience is key that experience is differentiated the only thing i do believe is that somewhere in this whole overarching online offline space there will be a merger i think yeah. businesses will have to digitize themselves we have learned that so for example you know we've introduced personal shopping we've introduced things like curbside pickup you know, people now you'll be surprised that i never in the world thought that people will actually ring up a, a call center and say listen can you send or the lady will say can i send you can you send me my chanel cream do you know on average we're doing four and a half five lakhs of rupees worth of personal shopping every day now this business did not exist till a month ago we had not even thought of it and how are we using it through app through digitization so i think there is going to be a convergence so if brands are going to work together it's brilliant now what when i hear ajay talk of a levi's and levi's talk of ajay what i see is there is a great movie like let's say 83 coming can you imagine if the collaterals of levi's can work out a special jeans which is around uh, you know the 83 model you know 83 the movie you know i think that is really where we brands have to work together it's not about competition it's about yeah. cooperation it's really all about that it is doesn't matter at the end of the day i want i want sanjeev's business to do well i want ajay's business to do well 
and we want our businesses to do well because we all have the common goal which is which is you know to to build on and and this is the greatest country in the world to do it i rather do it in this country than any other place in the world at this point of time great great thank you arjun so the deal is very clear sanjeev and ajay whatever business you make or whatever ideas you make the share will go to arjun definitely he is a app store you have to pay the royalty okay so have you noticed uh, uh, no matter how much we try to collaborate he's trying to find some little uh, you know kida somewhere to make sure something <laughs> is a good so like you know apple whatever you sell on your app the apple will get the share so arjun is very clear about his you know thought so so sanjeev uh, before i ask you that will you go and open up your shop at uh, pvr i want to ask you you was uh, uh, candidly telling you you was rejected in nif delhi campus at levis you know placement and now you are the managing director for levis for three continents first tell me what is the story behind this how you did it how you manage it is nothing you know i think uh, you know when you join the dots uh, backwards then it becomes a story when you uh, when you did not get placed at campus then it was tragedy so i think uh, uh, sometimes you know destiny uh, you know takes you to you know strange places and i think uh, you know if you look at my journey uh, at that point in time i think levi's was launching i think it was 1995 and levi's was launching its uh, first store in india and that that happened on i think 25th of june and we just celebrated 25 years of levi's and i was uh, and they were hiring the first management trainee and obviously uh, you know i did not get through but that started a series of uh, experiences which ultimately you know helped me move ahead in my career and uh, you know i started uh, from a factory floor uh, literally packing cartons and running a small printing unit and and working my way up and i think uh, that has really helped me build uh, resilience and grit and and i pretty much done everything which is possible from product merchandising marketing you know logistics you know you don't get so many experiences uh, you know uh, if you if you follow a straight line and i think if you look at statistics itself i think uh, uh, only one out of 100 ceos uh, actually go through the ranks from management trainee to ceo i think they are very very rare cases so statistics works for me uh, in that case because uh, i came back to levi's again in 1999 as a product manager and uh, you know i think uh, i worked hard worked well uh, uh, went away uh, to do a brand manager role and then uh, did 11 years at benetton i ran a e-commerce company which was sold to flipkart so i think it's interesting to look back and say that look i think uh, is great to come back and work for one of the greatest brands on this planet and one of the greatest companies which actually works with values and principles and i think uh, i i truly believe and i'm not saying this because i'm back in levi's but having worked with many companies i think this is truly one of the greatest uh, you know stories in the apparel business and we call it the original silicon valley startup uh, you know it is it was started as, uh, as a startup and i think uh, one of the things we spoke about uh, with our employees to our employees is the fact that levi's is now 163 years old it has seen two world wars it has seen the spanish flu it has seen the great depression it has seen the cold war it has seen you know name it levi's has been through uh, you know multiple situations where uh, people would think that things will get over but this business has, has survived and i think somebody you know uh, told me and made a comment that actually i am wearing my grandfather's 501s and there are so many 501 stories i'm sure ajay and arjun will have their own story and they said you should actually call it a consumer durable because it lasts for generations and uh, here we are with another pandemic and uh, i think my journey continues uh, we are focused on you know building out this brand and i think uh, yeah we'll succeed so i, I don't know what kind of parallel i'm hosting one is uh, one is started from trucking company to a biggest you know the mall uh, you know the biggest pvr the second is like fired third is like you know uh, uh, rejected what kind of panel i am hosting today i am really confused you know <laughs> the, the it's just all... destiny yeah it's uh, you know the story champion, builds up as you go uh, champ- so uh, sanjeev uh, uh, as uh, as we have discussed about as you have said that the levis has seen all the you know all the pandemics or all the wars or everything what is your plan like how you are sustaining and what is the plan to come back into the market and become more stronger look i think uh, if you look at uh, the brand itself uh, levis is something which is which is classic it is timeless uh, this is something consumers deeply relate with as a, as a category 
and of course uh, we are now a lifestyle brand it is not just about 501 so right now we are seeing a you know bit of shift in categories but i think uh, uh, as as ajay was mentioning as arjun was mentioning that you know there are things which are in your control and there are things which are outside your control uh, things which are in your control are in terms of how you basically serve your consumer and what are the channels of sales you use to serve your consumers when certain other channels of sales are not available so we initially started off with uh, e-commerce i think the prime thing and i will borrow from ajay in terms of three rs he used in terms of rescue revive and reinvent i think all three are happening at the same time on on different fronts on the product front uh, in terms of i think the first thing we uh, took care of is our employees making sure that our employees are safe we actually spent a lot of time during the lockdown in terms of training programs we trained i think more than 5000 people uh, you know front end staff uh, franchisee staff for 7 hours 8 hours so that they are prepared in terms of the protocols and everything so i think uh, everybody developed their own playbook and we did so on our own uh, we had some advantages being a global company that we could really different parts of the company in different parts of the world were going through different uh, you know learning curve and a different revival curve for example china came out first then there was korea japan there was australia new zealand some parts of europe like germany and and i think then uh, unfortunately india is is last on the curve and i hope that we will not get into a w curve and we will really see independence day as the real independence for consumers to go back and shop and uh, i think uh, we are working on multiple fronts on 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 innovation we are working working on product we are working on new ways of retailing using technology there are i think six seven projects which are going on like arjun described in terms of curbside pickup you know what is the omni experience you will give what is contactless shopping what can you do there so there are multiple things which are happening parallelly and i think uh, being a global uh, company you also have uh, the right kind of access and muscle to really invest behind the brand and i think uh, india being a very very important growth market and you know i run the you know south asia middle east and north africa markets middle east is also i think coming out i think you you must have recently seen videos of dubai uh, coming out of the pandemic you know israel is another market which is doing extremely well egypt so multiple markets are really uh, going back uh, to normalcy and we are just hoping fingers crossed that you know we don't fall back into uh, you know uh, the curve you know uh, and and to the bottom of the curve and this pandemic coming back again so yep so uh, there are a lot of journalists are sitting in the room and they are firing a lot of questions to me so uh, whatever is convenient for all three of you can answer otherwise you can leave <laughs> not a pressure but i'll just tell you sanjeev you know uh, you have seen the indian consumer being a indian you understand better the you know you connect with the indian consumer but you also see uae or israel like lot of other countries are in it. so what is the behavior difference or maybe like you know the pattern is you know how the pattern you see in india versus in you know, other countries can you just uh, give me little bit you know consumer behavior uh, strategy i think uh, from a consumer behavior point of view i think uh, typically if you look at millennials and gen z consumers across the world uh, i think uh, you know behave in the same manner i think uh, you know as uh, marketing professionals we make it very complicated and try to segment consumers uh, through demographic and psychographics there are i think those things have changed i think uh, consumers uh, you know look at the same kind of you know recognition the same kind of experience they look at you know the same kind of health and safety issues uh we are seeing similar kind of consumer behavior across across the board but what is interesting is that in china of course uh you know the whole e-commerce ecosystem is far more evolved uh so you are seeing a faster pick up in terms of how uh, e-commerce is tracking back and how malls are tracking back and how high street is tracking back also you have to understand that while we always you know talk about india being the uh, the fourth largest economy in the world but we have to also remember that we are the 138 in terms of per capita income and therefore uh, various governments are in terms of their the way they are able to support uh, you know industries the way they are able to support employees who are getting laid off is very very different and therefore we have a more challenging environment to run our business and the complexity is much larger and therefore uh, you know consumer behavior is sometimes shaped by you know the environment uh, you operate in so if you look at japan you know still consumers are going and we had some uh interesting lines and collaborations we had a collaboration with new balance uh, we launched it and you know 100 dollar plus shoes sold out in a couple of seconds so the appetite for consumption in different markets you must have heard stories of luxury brands 
you know doing uh, you know 200% growth on the first day of opening so i think there are similar stories across the board and i think uh, as a brand uh, we have a very very loyal base of consumers and and i think uh, uh, we saw a, a very good uptick across the board and i think uh, it will be a slow uh, you know uh, you know uh, starting uh, uh, start off for the brands here but as we get out of the pandemic and things normalize i think uh, a market like india or more emerging markets uh, in the middle east are going to really bounce back much faster and they will continue to uh, catch up on the growth so that that is my uh, my sense in terms of how consumers are going to behave so i heard some sentiments sandeep that the uh, high street uh, shops are doing uh, better compared to malls and i think uh, arjun can also verify the same fact but what what is your experience like i've seen your uh, bangalore high street shop which is like a very you know very interesting shop which uh, which is on indra nagar so what is your experience personally in uh, in this particular environment look i think again it's a question of you know when uh, the high street shop shop started and also there is an interesting nuance around high street shops itself the nuances that high street shops which are in very crowded markets which are stand alone versus high street shop uh, stores like indra nagar which is actually in a residential locality where most of the consumers are within walking distance you can walk 50 meters to the store and that is the concentration of the crowd so depending on you know how uh, uh, that is being seen and also remember that malls will have tremendous amount of health and safety protocols so you enter a mall there's going to be a check there's going to be sanitation there'll be multiple layers and also malls will also look at uh, the entire ecosystem functioning together right if you don't have cinema you don't have food courts it will take some time for climb back but i think that gap is only for one or two months but right now if you really see that gap is getting bridged you know by a small rate but if you look at that small rate it is not going to take more than more than say two to three months to bridge bridge that gap and i think it will all equalize uh, over the period of uh, next couple of weeks in 10 to 12 weeks i think good news for arjun for you so arjun do you agree with him uh, arjun you are Engineer on mute yeah sorry i think the uh, high streets actually you know opened about a month before the malls so that kind of took a little bit of the pent up demand we believe also let's not face let's not ignore the big uh, elephant in the room the big elephant in the room is e-commerce they're also doing well there's nothing wrong in that i think the market will, is going to find the right balance and as sanjeev said you know it's about 10 to 12 weeks when you know the customers start finding uh the confidence coming back um uh, you know brands are still kind of grappling with it yes brands like levis have really got their act together there are your brands out there that are still struggling you know fnb is still struggling to get labor back in uh, like we've opened our food courts we are we're doing sales of about 3 to 4 lakhs a day now is it anywhere close to the previous levels no but it is coming back and i think the big factor in my opinion the alpha is going to be the cinemas um i am i'm very optimistic that the government will realize sooner or later there's no need to close them you know you're as safe in a mall or in a let's say in your in a in a government building or in a hospital you're probably safer in a in a in a cinema hall trust me that i am so confident about so i think it's just a matter of all these jigsaw puzzle coming together and 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 i think brands shopping centers cinemas and most importantly let's not forget the customer you know as ajay said you know there is a there is a scare out there people are apprehensive and, and you know you would be i would be our families are you know so rightly so so i think it's it's let's just, just give it time uh, you know we are not here for the short term we are all here for the long term we believe in our businesses we believe in the in the story of india and the customer of india so i think it's it's a it's it's going to be uh, you know just a matter of tiding over and yes there will be some casualties there will be some brands that will will struggle and there's no doubt about it there will be you know everybody every business will struggle at some level but you know people who have good balance sheets strong management innovation customer first i think there's there's no there's no worry at all so arjun has given the again success recipe sanjeev you follow it but uh, you know uh, as like ajay is uh, uh, managing with netflix or amazon you are also have amazon in your life i think amazon is in everybody's life how you managing this e-commerce you know what is the strategy for e-commerce and live i think uh, uh, see look i think uh, when we look at e-commerce when we look at uh, brick and mortar uh, i think uh, people come to stores to have a very very different experience and let me take the example of our flagship store in select city walk if you look at that flagship store we have a tailor shop which does tremendous personalization and customization i think uh, our store there i think uh, 
uh, Arjun got his figures wrong that his uh, average of sales density is actually 2x. If you Arjun, if you look at look at the figures of national average versus what Silic City Work does, it is actually four and a half x on an average across all brands. So, I think uh, and there is a reason for it. I think the the reason is the overall experience and the customer experience uh, which you deliver. It's the ecosystem you have actually delivered there. And if you look at our store, also there are there are new lines, there are exclusive lines, there is personalization, there is customization. There's going to be all kinds of uh, you know consumer experience and convenience technologies which are going to be available. Amazon. So there are two ways you can really disrupt a business. The one way is if you have a disruptive product. So the 501 was a disruptive product. Apple iPhone was a disruptive product. You know, a gold class uh, PVR cinema with an elevated experience, uh, yep. with uh, you know, uh, with a luxury seating, with sushi served uh, at a call is an elevated experience. The other way you can actually disrupt uh, a market is by the way you sell. So I think Amazon has disrupted the market by the way they are selling, and they are they have become a platform. And I think every brand will ultimately have to evolve into a platform. And when I when I say platform, what is the, it is not just the transactional value of what you are giving the consumer. What is the experience? Are you in the in the center of culture? Which you know the example which uh, Arjun gave, saying that once, for example, uh, you know uh, Top Gun is released in a in a in a month or two, hopefully. You now that has been a movie which has been uh, in in the making for the. But the sequel has been in the making for last 35 years. Imagine a situation where we could actually get consumers to really take a piece of Top Gun back home. A Levi Strucker jacket with the Top Top Gun insignia, which was basically delivered exclusively exclusively at Select City Walk, and part of it actually delivered through cinema to PVR. You know, you could actually go to and and you could go to PVR. You could actually buy a gold ticket. It allows you a coupon for customization. You come back to the store at the Levi's store. You buy a, a, a Levi's trucker jacket, and you have a exclusive batch of Top Gun sold at the PVR, which is now customized at Levi's. Now, all the three uh, players in the ecosystem are getting a pie of that uh, consumer, and the consumer is getting a pie of that experience to take back home. And probably that trucker jacket is going to last uh, beyond our lifetime. For the next hundred years, and will be passed on generation. So that is that is what I call authentic, intrinsic experience building. And I can give you hundreds such examples in terms of how brands are actually building that experience. That can never happen online. You know, it it you know uh, that is impossible to happen online. So what we are really looking at a, at a I would call it a, a amalgamation of Disneyland alongside Walmart. You know, if you bring Disneyland and Walmart together. And and give an elevated experience. That is what consumers are going to look for. And given the fact that consumers are going to now also think very hard in terms of consumption, people are going to think about sustainability. They are think going to think about transparency. They are yeah. think going to think about health and safety. So you know, unless you are authentic, unless you are elevated, unless you are you know sustainable, I think there is very little chance to succeed. Gone are the days where the you know. Mediocre, middle uh, level, okay to survive experience uh, is 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 not. If you are in that business, I think you should shut shop and go home because that is not going to work anymore. Great, Sanjeev. So uh, two, three fireside uh, questions, which is coming from Himadri Network 18 Money Control. So one is like, uh, are your customers are keen to come back to store? They are already coming back to store. In fact, in fact, if you look at uh, you know the. Uh, the transaction and and what we are doing, it is you know we already crossed uh, you know more than half uh, of of last year. I think uh, which is a which is a good news, and I think we will get back to we are hopeful to get back to 80-90 percent over the next three four months. And everything depends upon you know what are the kind of restrictions. Some cities are going back into lockdown. There will be restrictions in terms of uh, you know whether malls can operate or not. So it is everything is dependent on that. But those areas, those places where uh, you know. Uh, uh, malls or high streets have been open consistently. We are seeing uh, climb back every week, week on week. We are seeing the growth, and which is which is really good news. Okay, so Sanjeev, only one more question. We have only five minutes more. Five uh, o'clock. We have uh, hard stop. So I I want to go back to Ajay. He is smiling and he got some good idea. So before I go to Ajay, just uh, let me know what is your plan to uh, start your store at uh, PVR. Uh, can you give some good idea to Ajay? 
I think already we have discussed. I don't want to share all the good Public ideas. Public don't know. Webinars. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I think. Uh, I, I all. I, I will leave you with this thought. I think for the audience, I'll leave leave the thought that cinemas and merchandising is actually, you know, it's uh, it's conjoint at the hips. And I think if you look at the movie business, I think the merchandising business generates the second largest revenue apart from the fact that you know people go to cinemas. And I think uh, you know Levi's has partnered. Uh, with movie licensing and and merchandise licensing in a big way, I think with the pandemic uh, coming in, uh, I think what I'm seeing is that a lot of businesses are actually open to new and disruptive ideas. And uh, again, we have discussed before the webinar. I think we will not share more than that. Uh, probably we'll have a separate call on that. Absolutely. So how you look at the quarter two? Just uh, before I go to Ajay and ask the same question, uh, what do you look at the quarter two for the sales purpose? Positive. 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 Yeah, you are very positive, huh? Sanjeev. <laughs> so Ajay, you know what I heard from both of them? They are looking at you and they are blaming you because they are not getting the right customer because the cinemas are not open. Okay? How do you see? How you perceive this uh, thought? No, as uh, as Sanjeev said, there are things within my control, and there are things with, with, which are not in my control. Uh, so as as soon as I can assure them that the moment I get a nod from the government, I'll be the first to open. We're all in the state of readiness, uh, very very eager to open. Uh, our people are getting trained. Uh, all the SOPs are in place. Everything that is needed to open uh, are in place. The only thing I can't guarantee just now is brand new movies because if we open on August fifteen. We'll have Hollywood films definitely. August twelfth is where Tenet has been announced, Mulan has been announced, uh, but we don't have any Indian films. Indian films are all coming. Uh, I think September onwards, October onwards. So that's the only thing I can do. If it's in my hand, I'll open them tomorrow, and I'll make sure that uh, the experience is good. So any one thing which uh, I think I, I want to ask this question to all three of you in three minutes. Okay, so one minute. So, what is your uh, like uh, other three months, you know, experience like this pandemic? What one thing which you have learnt out of, you know, uh, from your business perspective or your personal perspective? One thing which you have learnt in this three months, and you want to give a message to the audience <laughs> sitting in this uh, room? Any one thing, you know? No, I, I, as I said earlier, from the business perspective, I'll just come because you know I was personal perspective. Uh, from a business perspective, it's only this that don't put all your eggs in one basket. If that basket is something that can sustain this uh, pandemic, brilliant, <laughs> which you don't know, and uh, but, so some diversification should be there. Uh, personal, I think everybody. I mean, Arjun is doing Vedanta, but I think uh, all of us have really gone into this introspective mode, and uh, I think uh, spending time with yourself, with your family. All that has been just brilliant, um, and uh, I think so many things which were uh, on the to-do things that we, which which we couldn't do, uh, I'm able to do. I'm very fond of uh, music. I'm fond of singing. I want to have a band, so I'm doing that. I was very keen to get to know my kids very very well. I've got to know them exceedingly well now because they've been with me for last four months now. Family, mom, everybody, friends. Uh, so I think it's been a uh, it's it's quite a been a revelation this three four months. So one question, which is uh, I think very relevant to you, like is PVR planning to come up with its own PVOD platform, premium video on demand, like other global cinema chains are coming with? Any uh, any plan? No, no, nobody has come out with it just now because the content belongs to the studios, and mm -hmm. then there are people who spend so much money on networks like uh, Amazon and everybody. So very difficult, but you can definitely. Um, I mean, nothing is off the table just now. Is all I want to say. As I said, for the reasons that I gave you earlier, now I want to once again look at. What is the potential of PVR the brand, and uh, and want to come out with some tentacles around so, it? Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Ajay. Uh, Arjun, uh, uh, any one like you have already said about Vedanta, any one learning which you want to share with the audience? Well, I kind of agree with uh, uh, Ajay on one thing that I think diversification of your business is important, and I just want to share with you that uh, you know um, a couple of years ago, uh, and I don't know why, but uh, from A travel company to a shopping center business. I'm now becoming a farmer. Uh, we're getting into wow. into really large scale organic farming, uh, hydroponically. Uh, we have been on this project now for two years. We've seeded it. Hopefully, uh, of course, this pandemic has slowed everything down because we were to place some orders. Um, at that time, we were looking at some Chinese companies, but now I believe my team has moved west to Israel. Uh, looking at Israeli companies for the technology. I can help you there, Arjun. <laughs> Thank you. No, we we we. So it's actually a business of scale. Um, the idea is to disrupt the the food chain by providing 
organic clean food at a at an affordable price it's a dream i have to tell you that uh, it's a dream uh, we have a, a scientific community working on it um, and i do believe that at the end of the day you know we all need to eat food if humanity has to exist good clean food is going to be very important so that's something that that i think i've diversified into and if you allow me to have the last word after sanjeev has spoken i want to have one request from ajay okay <laughs> great sanjeev uh, sanjeev arjun has already given the diversified idea that he is going to food industry ajay i love the idea a, in fact right? and ajay is starting that. a band by the way you know you just miss that you know ajay is starting a band you know soon no no i didn't miss so that what is your idea no absolutely i think it's great that you know arjun is also thinking about uh, you know sustainable farming and food i think uh, arjun i would request you to get into you know cottonized hemp and uh, hemp and Uh, organic cotton that will oh. also help the cause for sustainable you know uh, clothing and uh, my my two things uh, very quickly because i know that we are running out of time is that you know i had a chance to basically spend time with my family because i live in bangalore my family lives here so i think uh, i was always you know wondering or reflecting that you know i'm not spending enough time with the family i got this three months to make up for all the two years which i you know i was traveling and commuting and uh, i think that is one the second thing which is the biggest learning for me and it is not a learning it was always obvious is the fact that your quality of your management team i think uh, you know today sitting at home you are empowering of people and people in the front lines and the quality of the management team is is the make or break you know the kind of work the teams have put together the kind of quality of thinking the way people have stepped up by two three levels i think that you know uh, that has been a big revelation and i think you can really see uh, that you know this brand you know you, uh, we can actually export a tremendous amount of talent from india i think the indian talent is getting trained on the level of complexity in the last four years demonetization gst implementation the worst economy last year in the last 40 years now the pandemic i think these guys when they go out into other economies they will just hit the ball out of the park and that is what is being demonstrated i'm so proud of my team in terms of what they're delivering is just incredible so before i close the session sanjeev you can't use any public platform to make your wife happy gunit happy okay you are making numbers sitting on this platform that you want to spend your time with them this is not acceptable this is a fact this is a fact you know that and a second thing is uh, uh, arjun uh, uh, i am dealing with two modernites here and my wife is also modernite she picked the idea she whatsapp me so sir i want to also do the farming so great idea <laughs> it is picked up already okay i am waiting to hear what arjun is going to ask uh, ajay yeah so, so over to you a month back ajay was on cnbc and a good common friend shireen bahn uh if you heard ajay said uh sing us a song and ajay did the most beautiful yeah, i heard that title yes. of a konkar i think I would, amazing i would i would want ajay and uh, if ajay permits me to join him and <laughs> i think we need we need peace we need health for everybody uh and uh, and ajay that was very moving and let's do it once more for this platform great thank you I, thank you ajay you can never sing you can sing I'll, well. i'll join you i'll join you if okay. you permit me ek kon ka satna करता पुरख निर्भ निर्वै अकाल पुरख अजूनी सभम कुर पर सा गप आद सच जुगाद सच है भी सच नानक सोचे सोच ना हो गई जे सोची लखवार चुपे चुप ना हो गई जे लाए रहा लिबतार भुखिया भुख ना पुत्री जे बन्ना पुरिया पार सहसियान पालक होए ता एक न चले ना के सचारा होइए के बकूड़े टूटे पार हुकम रजाई चलना नानक लिखे आना <laughs> thank you thank you very much ajay uh, uh, arjun and sanjeev giving your time very important time and uh, really really thank you and audience is very engaged and they are uh, 
they got the good lessons and good tips from you both uh, three of you thank you for coming on workplace trends thank you audience for coming thank and attending this session thank you thank you kishar thank you thank you thank you ajay sorry to put sorry to put you on a spot but that was beautiful no it thank was you. wonderful it's just uh, amazing thank you ajay for doing this thank, thank you, you everyone thank you uh, ajay we have yeah we have 21st of july we have professor sunil gupta from harvard university talking about disruption in the businesses by digital and uh, mr bezul somaya light speed venture partner they both will be talking about business uh, digital disruption in the businesses look forward to seeing you again on 21st of july thank you very much thank you very much.